Hey guys, what is going on? So NZXT expand their product line today with a new ATX mid tower case. Meet the new H500, which is going for a cool 69 US dollars or 129 Australian. And so over the last couple of days working with the case, I can say that I am a fan, but with the mid tower market being so competitive, especially in the budget end, it does need to compete with the likes of the Fantex P300, and of course the ever popular fractal design Meshify C. The H500 also comes in the form of the H500i for $30 more, where you can get NZXT's smart device, which you can learn more about in the top right hand corner. And here you also get an RGB strip and a vertical GPU mount. Generally, vertical GPU mounts should be avoided because although they do look cool, they do push the card directly up against the side panel, which restricts airflow tremendously. And in terms of the smart device, well, most of you guys know my thoughts on this already. At the end of the day, it should be referred to as a PWM fan splitter with also an RGB header attached to it. But for an asking price of an extra $30, it does seem pretty fair. But for those wanting to save a little bit more cash, there is the vanilla H500 version, which we will be reviewing today. All right, so time for a little bit of a group photo here. We've got the H400i Micro ATX uh, mid tower on the left, H700i on the right, the S340 Elite, one of the most uh, common cases that we'll see today, and then the brand new H500 right there. Uh, and basically this shot here, you can see that the H500 is really compact uh, when stacked up against the other cases, even the H400i, which is a Micro ATX tower, uh, and definitely up against the H700i, which is an absolute monster uh, in this comparison here. All right, one last comparison here, probably one that a lot of you wanted to see. We've got the H500 here, P300 from Fantex, and then the Mesh of IC from Fractal Design all the way to the right. So $69, $59, and then $89 or you know $79 on a good day, depending on where you buy it from. Um, so the comparison here is that we've got you know similar traits for the tempered glass side panel, you know, cut off by the power supply shroud. Uh, the Mesh of IC, of course, has the full one. Um, but a lot of people are probably asking themselves, you know, is the mesh of IC worth it for an extra $30? And we'll be talking about that a little bit later, but something I wanted to sort of just get across here is the different airflow design across all three cases. The H500 has nothing visible on the front at all. Um, the P300 at least has the top and bottom ventilation. And then the mesh of IC has this full dedicated, uh, ventilated side, uh, not side panel, front panel which, uh, you know, the Mesh of IC is very known, very well known for its great airflow. So we will see how the H500 survives up against these two other cases. And so in terms of design, despite this being one of the cheaper NZXT cases on the shelves, it does have that same premium feel and build quality that you can expect from their more expensive options like the H700i. The matte paint looks great and is definitely preferred over a glossy finish, which leaves annoying and hard to remove fingerprints. And in terms of colors, you've got black with either a red or blue interior bracket, and also a complete black or white model. All right, so let's take a closer look at that tempered glass side panel. You can see here that the panel doesn't span the entire side of the case like a lot of the other mid tower cases available today do, and instead is reserved for only the visible portion of your system. As we looked at before, it's very similar to what we see with the Fantex P300, but I do prefer the execution here by NZXT a little bit more. Firstly, the panel spans the entire length of the case, making it look less like a window and more like a part of the case as a whole and there's also no perimeter for the bottom side of the panel which gives the illusion that it actually disappears behind the power supply portion of the case and lastly there are no thumb screws at all to mount the panel which gives this ultra clean and flush look with only a single thumb screw to secure the panel after the push pins are locked in at the top so a big thumbs up here and i hope to see this design continue onto full-sized panels in the future as it definitely looks a lot cleaner and although this is marketed as a more affordable case, the H500 borrows features from its more expensive brothers like a perforated power supply shroud which allows for modular 2.5 inch drive mounting and also a similar design for cable management routing as well which is definitely appreciated. Two fans come pre-installed and oddly enough they are both configured as exhaust, one 120mm directly at the rear of the case and another one at the top which can be upgraded to a 140 if you prefer. For front fan placement, we've got support for two 120 or 140 millimeter fans and radiator support is fine for both a 240 and a 280. 
Front mounted fans and radiators will need to be mounted to a bracket though for installation and overall this works pretty well. So the front panel is not removable, but the benefit of this is that you've got a fairly seamless design for the entire case where there's no creases or gaps that really stand out at you. And this really makes the case look and feel like one complete solid unit. Here's what a 280 millimeter AIO looks like. And if you wanna run a push pull configuration, you will need to remove that interior bracket. Speaking of the interior bracket, it can be used to mount both reservoirs and pumps for custom loops, but I really would like to see some encouragement from NZXT on its intended application, as I feel like nine out of 10 people buying these cases with this feature don't actually know what this is. And for those that do, there's no compatibility list or guidance. Two two and a half inch drive bays are pre-installed on the power supply shroud as we saw earlier, but these can be relocated to the back, which is definitely appreciated. And there's also two three and a half inch drive bays positioned towards the front of the case as well. And before I forget, there are dust filters pretty much everywhere on the case where air can get in at both the bottom and side for the front intake, the top fan slot, and of course for the power supply as well. Okay, so enough of that. Time to test airflow and see how this thing actually performs. But first, the build. All right, well, what do you know? There we go. There is our uh, usual Ryzen test system with the R5-1600 uh, with the stock Wraith Spire Cooler, the GTX 1063 gigabyte. Uh, building was really, really easy in this case. I have to say there wasn't really uh, much struggle at all. So there we go, there's the cable management. Really easy and as we've got here, the, uh, you know, the 24 pin routing is super simple. It is a bit of a struggle if you do have, you know, thick custom cables that I have here. But, you know, I could imagine if you're working with um, thinner stock cables that it could be quite easy. Um, you've got the Velcro straps there and, uh, you know, mine are a bit long, so it does wrap around there. But uh, the CPU 8-pin cable, you've got routing there, tucks in and, yeah, overall, pretty clean. All right, so time to talk about those thermals and how this case actually performs. I did two tests here for the new H500, the usual stock out of the box configuration with fan placement untouched, and then a second one with the top exhaust fan now functioning as a front intake fan. The NCXT H700i does run over two and a half degrees cooler than the H500 in our CPU stress test, but keep in mind that it also comes packed with four 120 millimeter fans out of the box. When the Mesh FIC is matched with the same number of fans, for example, our Ryzen 5 1600 sits under 60 degrees C with an ambient room temperature of 20. Overall though, the NZXT H500 is performing quite well here and runs slightly cooler than the Fantex P300 and also the S340 Elite. For GPU thermals in Heaven 4.0, we can now see that moving the top exhaust fan and placing it at the front of the case to function as an intake fan, it does force cool air onto the GPU and improve thermals by about a degree and a half. Out of the box, this should undoubtedly be the default configuration, but some users may prefer to populate this fan position with an AIO instead. Again here, we're about two and a half degrees behind the H700i, but you may be able to get close to it or match that result by adding another fan or two. The bottom line here is that airflow is good overall. Not spectacular, but for a case that isn't marketed as a high airflow case or one that doesn't have the entire front portion replaced with mesh, it's definitely doing a good job. All right, so time for some closing thoughts on the NZXT H500. And I've got to say, guys, I am really struggling to find anything that sticks out about the H500 that I really don't like. Um, overall, it's a really good case. And one thing's for sure, I am happy that NZXT offer both the vanilla variant, which we reviewed today, and also the I variant, you know, for people who want those extras. To be honest, most people probably don't want the smart hub, the RGB strip, and the vertical GPU mount anyway. So it is nice to have that standard version. And for $69, it really is a competitive option. Now, when the original S340 came out, it quickly became the go-to case for pretty much everyone. I guarantee that some of you even now watching this video probably have an NZXT S340 or an S340 Elite sitting on your right or left side. If there's anything that you guys can take away from this review is that the H500 feels like an updated refresh of the S340 with a cleaner tempered glass side panel design, sound airflow, and some really good cable management as well. As always guys, I'm interested to see what you guys think of the new H500 from NZXT, and I'll also leave some links down below if you wanna check out pricing as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.